Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. Today I'm going to share with you some quick beginner tips for cutting plywood on your CNC. First tip is setting up tabs. Now this was the cause of my very first crash of my CNC and it's something really simple to fix. In Fusion 360, when you select the tabs option, it will assign a default height and width. Usually for plywood, this isn't enough to keep your piece held down. As a rule of thumb, try and set your tab height to at least two layers of plywood. This is usually around two mil. You can also increase the tab width a little if you wanna be extra careful. These are the settings I used and they seem to work good. Next tip is reducing tear out and the type of end mill you use. Here I did a few test cuts to see the difference between a straight and up cut end mill. Now most people will suggest a straight flute or a down cutting flute for plywood. And I would usually go with my straight cut over my up cut bits, but you can still cut plywood with an up cut flute. The most important thing I discovered is that you need to break the first layer of plywood with some very shallow passes. As you can see, there isn't much difference in this experiment between the up cut and the straight bits, but you can really see the difference those initial shallow passes make when comparing these cuts. Another big factor to getting a good finish is the condition of your tool. Here you can see my straight flute bit is pretty beaten up. It started like this only a few months ago and I really haven't been cutting much on it. The culprit is what you may have seen in this earlier clip. You can see my chips produced from these first test cuts is a very fine powder. And this is a very good indicator to tell you that you have the wrong feeds and speeds. To calculate your feed rate, you need to understand this simple formula. Feed rate equals spindle RPM times by the number of flutes times by chip load. Now for plywood, we want our spindle RPM as low as it will go. The lowest my spindle will go to is 10,000 RPM. The reason we want slower RPMs is because it means less friction and heat is produced during the cut. Friction and heat reduce the life of your end mill. And once your bit gets dull, it won't cut as well, and usually tear out will be more visible because of this. The number of flutes is self-explanatory. Just look at your bit and count the number of flutes it has. Chip load can be tricky, but a quick Google search will usually give you the info you need to get started. From researching online, the chip load for plywood is around 0.27 to 0.38 millimeter. Do the calculations and you'll get your feed rate. You can see on my first test, I was running my feed rate at 1600 millimeters per minute and a spindle RPM of 18,000. This calculation is telling me to run it over three times that feed rate and with a much slower RPM. As this was a slot cut, i.e. I was using the full width of the end mill to make the cut, I bumped down my feed rate a bit to 3,800 millimeters per minute. I did this estimate through the G-Wizard tool, moving my slider to 50%. G-Wizard is definitely worth looking into for any beginner wanting to learn feeds and speeds. Here you can see the two cuts. Again, the cut using the initial shallow passes to break the initial layer of plywood produced the best finish. But I was surprised how well it cut at these feeds and speeds regardless. Most importantly, I got the same finish as before, but you can see the difference in the chips. Now I'm producing real chips, which tells me I'm not causing as much friction and therefore dulling of my tool with this cut. I could probably even push these speeds more if I wanted to. You can also see here on the walls of the cut, there are no burning marks and on the first cut, you can see there was some burning. And that's another telltale sign you're cutting too slow and dulling your bit. But what do you do if your CNC router isn't rigid enough for the formula's feed rate? Well, I'd like to thank William who explained to me the concept of reducing the number of flutes to keep your feed rates down. At first I didn't quite understand it, but thanks to him, I've now got my head around it. And you can see in this G-Wizard example, you effectively half your feed rate by halving the number of flutes. Now this is very handy for the smaller machines that might not be able to handle those higher feed rates. So to sum it up, Use tabs at least two mil in height to safely secure work. Straight and down cut are usually better for plywood than up cut end mills. Break the first few layers of plywood with shallow cuts first before going full depth of cut. Slower RPMs reduces the friction and heat and increase tool life. If your chips from cutting are like powder, then increase your feed rate. If you can't increase your feed rate due to machine rigidity, then use single flute cutters. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all later.